morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. It is so great to see everyone um, here fellowshipping together. I am so honored and blessed to be among you. And I'm excited because God has such great things in store for us. So many blessings. Um, he's so faithful and we are his children. And I'm just excited for what God is going to do here amongst us. Every burden, every concern, every need, God will supply. He loves to supply the needs of his children. Um, I have to confess this morning. Can you get any closer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk louder. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, see if that Alan. works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I want to confess. for Alex. So, um, yeah. I'm loud. I'm actually loud. So this, you know, I've been... Still do you a little bit. Still, okay, a little yeah, closer. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Is that good? Is that good? Yeah. That's good? Yeah? Okay. It's like too intimidating. All right. So um, first of all, I want to thank... Um, it was such... I was overwhelmed last week at such a warm welcome from Grace Faith Church. Thank you so much for that outpouring of love. That mm -hmm. dinner was amazing. I taste Asian food before, but that was like... Amazing. So Lois and I want to thank you so much for such a warm welcome. Um, I showed someone the pictures of the cake, and they were very jealous, and they're Christian. But anyway, <laughs> um, the cakes were so delicious. We had such a warm welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It was really special. Um, I attended my first community night. John, you hit the ball out of the park. It was great. Thank you so much. Um, it was so engaging. Um, if you've never been to one, you want to come, especially if John, I'm sure others do it as well, but it was, it was really great. We really delved into the Word of God and left with a deeper understanding of His love for us and a deeper understanding of the Word. The community time was great. The food was great. Um, yeah, it was um, really wonderful. I will be out of town next week. Yeah, I've already planned something with the group. Up in upstate, so I will not be here next week. But when I return by God's grace, it's going to be a continuing, we're going to continue the message that we have that we're going to cover this morning. So let's pray before we look into God's word. Dear gracious Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this privilege to spend time into you in your word. We thank you. That your word is truly a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. And Holy Spirit, we realize that only you can touch our hearts and move us and enlighten us. So we're depending, Holy Spirit, on you to do a new work in our lives and our hearts. That you'll reveal yourself to us in a new way. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the time of worship. We thank you for the worship leaders and how they're ministering how they minister to our souls, how you use them to be a blessing to us. And come, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Take full control, and we pray that you will be glorified. And we won't fail to give your name all the praise and all the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So the first time I had the blessing of speaking to you all was about come, where the Father was saying, come unto me, only that labor. I, I labor. Um, last week, we talked about prayer, and here we're talking about prayer again. And I'm like, Lord, anything different? And he said, no, you know personally how spending time in my presence transformed your life. And I can remember I was quite young, and coming to church back and forth, my parents would take me to church, and um, I would sometimes even fall asleep. It was just, it was a cool place. I felt peace there. But it wasn't until I had a teaching and heard a series on prayer that my life was transformed, my personal prayer life. And the I, I can't even remember who the Bible teacher was, but the Bible teacher explained the scripture of the importance of having a personal experience with God. It's great to have a corporate experience. That's beautiful. I mean, I was just so engulfed in the music and worshiping God with God's people. But I can remember that teaching, and we were told from God's word, when you enter into your prayer closet, that he will meet you there. 
And I was young, and I was like, really? And I can remember being inspired by that series of teaching of my personal prayer life, and it transformed my life. And I realized that one of the goals of our elders here, we want to mobilize the church. We want to see God manifest himself. And the only way we can do that is as we continue to bring our personal prayer lives to a different level. Our, you know, sometimes you have a friend, right? And how does it feel when your friend ghosts you, right? Mm -hmm. I just learned that word a few weeks ago, so <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that hip. But anyway, the thing is, sometimes we ghost God, right? And we only go to him. And then what about that friend when they only show up when they need something, you know? How often do we do that with God, you know? The friend, I need some, you know, got a dollar, got some money, you know? And then you don't see them anymore. You were gracious, right? And then they're in need again of something, you know, a ride or something. And then they show up again. And you're like, ah, what's up with this relationship here? And sometimes then we do that with God. But as we look into God's word, we're going to see that God wants an intimate, moment-by-moment -moment relationship with us. And as we draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to us. And the blessings that he bestows upon us as we fellowship with him is unspeakable, is unspeakable. So our thought this morning is a parable, right? You know that Jesus spoke in parables, and when you take God at his word, you see incredible things. When you humble yourself and say, God, I'm going to take you at your word, that's when he manifests himself in an incredible way. So we want to see what Jesus has to say in the scriptures, and I know we'll be blessed. So we have a parable this morning, and we're looking at St. Luke in chapter 8. And I'm going to read it to you, and then we're going to share some thoughts on it, and then we're going to go on our way rejoicing after we take communion and do various things. Okay. So we have here, and he, that's speaking of Jesus, spake a parable unto them, to this end, to this end, this was the purpose of this parable, right? And it was that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And NIV say, don't quit, in so many words, don't give up. That men ought to sometimes pray, always pray, and not to faint, don't give up. And so Jesus was very, he gave an illustration, so that a story, because stories are great, because you could take it with you. You might forget everything else, but you'll remember the story. So he was a good storyteller. So he said that there was a city, there was in a city a judge, which fear not God, neither regarded man. So it's like a movie we're watching, right? And the first character that we're seeing is a judge important judge. But listen to his personality. He doesn't fear God, nor does he care about people. Ah, politicians, right? Uh, doesn't look good, right? And there was a widow in the city, and she came unto him, saying, avenge me of my adversary. So now we have another character in the movie, right? She comes up, the judge is there, the judge is there to help the people, right? Evil, right? But we heard about his personality. So she has a problem. She's a widow. So right there we know that this is a person that might be in need. She lost her husband, right? So she doesn't have anyone to really speak on her behalf. Her husband's not there, right? So she's a widow. And she comes and says, avenge me of my adversary. So she has someone that's giving her some problems, right? And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest her com continual coming she will weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust sa judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be long with them, 
I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Shall he find faith? Will he find those that still believing, still trusting? Faith, we walk by faith and not by sight. Will he find those that, because it takes faith to pray, right? You have to have faith in God to pray. Will he find those that will pray and not faint? If we want any changes in our lives, any changes in our lives, if we want changes in our families, if we want changes in this community, prayer must be a top priority. God, has, God told us last week in his word, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. But the first requirement is for us to do what? To call upon him, to pray. And then he promised that he will show us. He will manifest himself in a way that we cannot imagine. So the possibility of accomplishing great things rests in our commitment to prayer. Jesus said in John 15, 16, if he asks anything in my name, I will do it. If you ask anything. So we have to pray in Jesus' name, right? So that's more or less like, think of like the richest man on earth. I don't know what his name is. Just think of the person that has all this wealth, right? And he says, hey, I have some checks to give you. As many as you want. As a matter of fact, what I did, I signed my name on the check. You just pull it out, cash it in when you want to. Can you imagine that? So you have this checkbook with the richest man's name signed on the check. What do you think would be the impact when you go to the bank with that check and they see not Mike Nesbitt's name there, because that's not, and they'll say like, oh, well, you, you put him in the red. I mean, that first <laughs> check, you're in trouble. But you see the richest man on earth's name, they see his name there. They're like, and his signature's there. What do you think is going to happen when you put that amount there? The bank is going to respect you and pull out whatever that amount is because it's backed by his name. How much more when we pray in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, so we say, Jesus, Heavenly Father God, we're coming in Jesus' name. He said, whatever you ask, in my name, the Father will give. So we can bank on that, right? That should encourage us to pray in Jesus' name. So often we pray, or maybe, I have, maybe not you, but so often I pray, and I grow weary. You know, I'm praying about something, I'm like, about this and we give up we faint but Jesus tells his disciples in this parable that they should always pray and not give up what is this parable telling us it's telling us not to get weary not to get weary don't give up keep communing with your father you might be praying long and hard for something, but he hears your prayers. I said, like, like, like Ellen was telling us, sometimes so often he's working in the background. We might not see what he was doing. Remember we gave the account of Peter in jail a few Sundays ago? They were praying. They didn't know that God was working miracles, but they kept on praying. There was just one miracle after the next, as the jail cell doors were swung open, as God put the, the soldiers to sleep, God was working, God was doing this, and, and what was God's people doing? They kept praying, they kept praying. So, we're told in Hebrews 10.35 that 
And this is a scripture the Holy Spirit reminds me of over and over again. Hebrews 10, 35 tells us, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. Ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, which is to pray, right? Have patience that ye might receive the promise. Don't stop. Don't give up, right? I like the NIV. I'm going to say, read it in the NIV. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You, you have need of perseverance. So that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Ye have need of perseverance. And that's what this lesson is about. That's what this message is about. About perseverance. We're going to pray till we see God do those great and mighty things in our lives, in our family, in our community. We're not going to give up. We're not going to get weary. Now, in the parable that we read as we wrap up this morning, the judge had a personality that's not too engaging, not too, but yet the widow, she had to come. He was the judge, right? But I mean, he didn't have a personality that kind of like motivated you to come to him because he didn't fear God and he didn't care about people. But yet she went, right? Because she's like, I need help. But isn't it wonderful to know that our Heavenly Father is a loving Heavenly Father? That He's not like that unjust judge. He cares deeply for us. He cares richly for us. The characteristics of our Father we should think about as we pray to Him. Our Father is all-powerful. All-powerful. I'm going to keep coming. He's all powerful. Our Father is sovereign. There's no one higher than our Father. Our Father is holy and just. We're coming to a Father that's loving. He loves us. Isn't that wonderful to know? Our earthly Father might have tried, but might have missed the mark big time. But our Heavenly Father loves us with an ever loving, lasting love. He loves to give good gifts to his children. That should motivate us. Our Father is faithful. Our Father is merciful. Another thing in closing that we have to remember as we spend time with our Father is that his timetable is not our timetable. And that's what I have to remind myself over and over again. You know, I like that when I put it in the microwave, right away, right? I don't like, I don't even like to wait online. I mean, cash app right away. Said, I don't, you know, days of writing letters. No, no, I clicked, mm, it's there. That's the culture we live in, right? But that's not how our Heavenly Father operates. So this timetable, we read in 2 Peter 3, 8, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years <coughs> as one day. So I guess, Lord, I've been waiting one second for this in your sight. So I'm just going to keep waiting. But I love the song that the worship team sang this morning. Prayer is not all just about my wish list. It's spending time in his presence. It's worshiping him. It's just fellowshipping with our Heavenly Father. And once we get that understanding that just to be in his presence, that's where the fullness of joy is. That's where we're going to get strength. That's where we're going to get revelation. That's when we're going to feel his peace. I can remember for so many years, 
I thought prayer was bringing my shopping list to Jesus. And like, Lord, and then, okay, I didn't get this yet, Lord. And I get, okay, Lord, I'm coming again with this list. But when I got the understanding that prayer is so much more, it's fellowshipping with the Father, it's resting at His feet. It's the, it's the one thing. Remember Mary and Martha? It's that one thing. Isn't that wonderful? Did it inspire you to know that just being at his feet, that alone is a privilege and a blessing. What a friend we have in Jesus. All right. One more scripture. We're going to save the next for next time. Not next week. We can't next. I have a lot more about prayer. Because the more you dig into God's word about prayer, the more you just motivated to say like, oh, I just can't get wait to get into my prayer closet. Me and Jesus. Oh, all right. But we're going to work on that. We're going to work on that. And um, I just want to end by the wonderful invitation we have to commune with our God. We're encouraged in Hebrews 4.16. We're told, let us come boldly before the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Many of us grew up thinking that it was a throne of judgment where we would find shame and condemnation. But it's a throne of grace where we find mercy and grace and we can come boldly. So he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always, men ought always to pray and not faint. Men ought always to pray and not to give up. May you be inspired. May you be encouraged to spend more time with your father this week than you ever have. Because he's waiting for you. Don't give up. Keep praying. God bless you. Thank you. Dan, I'm one of the elders at City Grace, so we're going to do our communion this week. Um, so I'll be going through the um, Christian Reformed Church liturgy here. Um, friends, today we have the privilege of sharing in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. All who are baptized and have professed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior are invited to participate in this meal. As we come to the table, as repentant sinners, Christ wants to assure us of his forgiveness. As we come with our struggles, Christ wants to assure us of his living presence. As we come with our doubts, Christ wants to touch us with the flesh and blood reality of his life. Let's pray. With joy, we praise you, gracious Father, for you have created heaven and earth made us in your image and kept covenant with us even when we fell into sin we give you thanks for jesus christ our lord who by his life death and resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life therefore we join our voices with all the saints and angels and the whole creation to proclaim the glory of your name amen, amen. We give thanks to God, the Father, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Before he suffered, he gave us this memorial of his sacrifice until he comes again. At his last supper, the Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this in remembrance of me for whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim the lord's death until he comes 
Lord our God, send your Holy Spirit so that this bread and this cup may be for us the body and blood of your Lord Jesus Christ. May we and all your saints be united with Christ and remain faithful in hope and love. Gather your whole church, O Lord, into the glory of your kingdom. At this point, will the ushers please come forward? to it and we'll partake together first with the bread. Take, eat, remember and believe that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. Jesus was given for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. Let's close in prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let's all stand together and let's close out by singing this song.
truly a friend that sitteth closer than a brother. What a friend that would leave heaven's glory to come to this sin-cursed world to pay the utmost price, to pay the price for our redemption on the cross. That he was wounded for our transgressions, that he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. What a friend. What a friend. We thank you, Father, for this sacred moment. We thank you for the fellowship of our brothers and sisters this morning, Lord. We thank you for speaking to us, Lord. Reminding us, Lord, that you want to meet us daily, moment by moment, in sweet communion. Father, so often, Lord, we try to figure out and do things on our own. And we kind of like use you as a spare tire. But Father, forgive us. We don't want to wait to come to you when there's an emergency, Lord. But Holy Spirit, you're bidding us to come to you on a regular basis to commune with you. We thank you, Lord God, for this Sunday that we commemorated the death of your Son on the cross. What a price was paid for our salvation. We thank you. We pray right now for those that are not well, that are sick, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that by your stripes you are healed. We pray for healing, Lord, this morning, Lord. We pray for healing, Lord. Healing of the mind, healing of the spirit, Lord. Heal us, Lord. We pray for those that are have anxiety and concern and Frustrated about certain things. You know about it, Lord. You said the very hairs on our head are numbered, so you care, Lord. Those that are frustrated, may they experience your peace. Father God, please. We're praying even right now. We're putting into practice what you told us, Lord. Bring peace to your people. A peace that passeth understanding. A confidence to know that you're working things out, though we don't even see it, Lord. Bless your people this morning, Lord, with peace in the midst of the storm, in the midst of everything that's going on in the world. For you are the Prince of Peace, Lord God. Those that have financial struggles, Lord, make a way for them this week, Lord. Please provide a job or provide, provide increase for your people, Lord. Those that are weary, encourage. May this community be an encouragement to each other. May the love, may your love be felt one to another. We thank you. And we pray, we end by saying, may the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our King and our Redeemer. And let the people of God say, Thank you.